New I-bond interest rate is out for the next six months. Is it good news or has it continued to decline? I've got that update and more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. The iBond is not, it's not a bond issued by Apple, although it sounds kind of cool. It's a, it's a savings bond. So like, a, like the savings bonds you got when you were a kid from grandma. Okay, and, but the I in this case means inflation. It's a, it's a special savings bond that is supposed to have an interest rate that should keep up with or keep pace with inflation. And, um, and so therefore these things, no one really cared about them. No one really used them up until about two and a half years ago, where all of a sudden this savings bond turned out to provide one of the most competitive interest rates out there in the market and offering a guaranteed interest rate. Now this was a couple years ago, but of almost 10%. I mean, and guaranteed from, from uh, since obviously issued by the, the US government. And so, so got a lot of attention there, but has a lot of complexities, a lot of moving pieces. And, and one of those is that interest rate changes every single, every single six months, so, so, so twice a year. Well, just got the new updated interest rate for the next six months. Is it continuing to decline, which I'll share in just a second, or is there good news? Well, just to catch you up, if you're not familiar with I-bonds, okay, so, so check out the link here. Um, essentially, I-bond is a savings bond. Now it has a 30 year term. So you're holding this thing for 30 years. That's how long you're, you, you can hold it. However, the minimum hold is 12 months. So you've got to hold it for at least 12 months. And, and, uh, and then after that, if you say, nah, I want, I want to get my money out of this thing, it's not offering a good interest rate or, or I need the money for a different purpose. Again, it's, it's locked up for 12 months, but then after 12 months, if you withdraw the dollars after 12 months, but in the first five years of holding this thing, then you got to give up some of the interest. There's a little bit of penalty that you need to pay back. And so, so again, already, we're already getting into the complexities here. Further, especially this was, this was important when people were looking at, you know, really appealing interest rates up in the, you know, 9%, 10% range. Um, well, can I just put all my money into this thing? No, you can't. There's a limit. There's, you can invest up to 10 grand per year into I-bonds electronically, but you can also do another five grand a year per person, by the way, these are the per person limits, uh, by, by buying paper I-bonds through your tax return, through your tax refund. So, <laughs> all right, so, so you can tell, this is a, a extremely complicated uh, in investment, com complicated instrument here. So, but if the interest rate is appealing enough, then maybe it makes sense to, to overlook some of those complexities and still have this as part of your overall financial life, a financial tool that you use. One of the other complexities and features of this thing, like I told you, it can either be a good thing or a bad thing is that this interest rate changes every six months. So essentially every six months, so November 1st until the end of April and then May 1st until the end of October, um, they, there's a new interest rate that's issued. And if you're, if you're just buying an I-bond for the first time, then that's going to be, and, and you buy one during that window, whatever window that is, then that's gonna be the interest rate that you receive for the, first, for, for the next six months. And then after that, your interest rate will shift. That interest rate is made up of, of two components. There's a fixed rate that will never change during the entire 30 years that you hold that thing or forever, however long you hold it, okay? The fixed rate, but then there's the inflation, the variable rate as well. And so that variable rate is the part that can, can adjust or adapt uh, and will adapt with inflation every six months. Prior to inflation surging, the fixed rate was very low, uh, you know, maybe 1% or so, and then it got down to about zero. And then the inflation rate, uh, that was next to nothing as well. So previously, before the big spike in inflation, these were paying somewhere in the two to 3% range and nothing very, very exciting. Well, when we saw inflation spike, that fixed rate continued to be zero because again, the Fed was keeping interest rates very, very low. So that fixed rate was zero, 
but the that inflationary, that changeable rate, that 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 uh, that adjustable rate every six months went to three percent, went to six percent, then went to nine, almost ten percent, and since then, over the past oh. 18 months or so, that interest rate has been coming down from that nine, almost 10%, like I said, down to over 6%. And then most recently, the, the most recent six months, it was at 4.3, okay? Well, the new six month interest rate for I-bonds issued right now is 5.27%. So it's actually gone up. That is good news. That is a competitive rate, much much more competitive even than the 4.3% considering what else is out there with interest rates. Now, not only is that good news that the rate went up, there's if you if you peel back some of the layers of the onion, it actually is there's more good news in that the fixed rate that will not change is 1.3%. That's pretty good. So you'll have that for the entire length of time that you own that I bond. The variable rate then is 1.97 every six months, annualize that, mash it all together, that's where you get the 5.27%. So, so ultimately good news and buck the trend of those rates coming back down. But here's the question, is it worth it? Is it worth it? And let's first ask, is it worth it if you don't have I bonds right now or if you haven't put another 10 grand in this year? Is it worth it to invest new money or, or additional money into I bonds? Well, at 5.27%, what I like is that fixed rate, 1.3, that's not going to change. But the variable rate, I've shared with you several times, I've done an I bond video for uh, every six months for the past few years, is that at some point we know that inflation is going to go back down. It might be uh, longer than any of us would, would want. Heck, no one wanted inflation to begin with, but it might take a little bit longer, but at some point you're likely going to look at the, this interest rate and say, it's not competitive anymore. Let me pull the dollars out. Very rarely would I imagine someone's gonna hold this savings bond for 30 years. I think most will actually cash them out within five years. If you were someone that wanted to hold it for a longer period of time, that 1.3% interest rate that that's fixed offered right now in these new I bonds, I think that's good, okay? However, when I look at the total interest rate, 5.27, that's not that great. Now, thankfully it is competitive with what you can find at a CD or what you can find with, uh, with treasuries uh, going directly there. But it's ultimately just competitive. It's not so competitive, so appealing that it makes sense to, to kind of overlook some of the additional complexities that savings, that savings bonds offer. So is it worth it for new dollars? I'd want you to work with your CFP for dollars that it's not such a good deal anymore that you should bend over backwards to try to drum up dollars and throw a new 10 grand into this. Working with your certified financial planner, looking at all six areas of your financial life, if you've got extra dollars or dollars that should be lower risk or dollars that, um, that, that maybe are longer term and you'll be putting them into bond investments but you want something fixed and stable then talk to talk to your cfp and see if this makes sense for a portion of those dollars but ultimately when the rate was seven percent six point nine but seven percent when it was when it was 9.6 or, or almost 10 percent that's where okay the added complexity is worth it okay um for some dollars but no at some point you'll cash them out right now at 5.27 you can find that same interest rate and lock it in for more than six months, by the way, by getting a, a CD or CD special. You could even do so by buying a treasury bond in, or, or T-bill. And so therefore, the fact that this rate right now is at the same level as of those other instruments and that you know this rate is going to change, I'm not sure it's so enticing that you should invite the complexity into your life. And then second, if you already own I-bonds, is this interest rate change, does this mean, well, now nah, it's now time to get the dollars out of there? Well, if you already own I-bonds, you have a different fixed rate. This is the highest fixed rate that's been offered in several years. So likely, if you, if you already have I-bonds, you probably bought into it when the interest rate was up near 10% and that fixed rate was zero. So your annualized interest rate on this thing is, is gonna be about 4% or less. And, while that's not so low that yes, you've got to get out of this thing, um, it's not as competitive as current interest rates. So the question for you will be, well, what's the purpose of those dollars? What's the purpose of these dollars in your financial life and working with your CFP to see if it makes sense to give up, you know, pay that penalty, give up some, a few months of interest to pull the dollars back out 
because you, you, you wouldn't have held it for at least five years and repurpose these dollars. The interest rate that you could get out there competitively at CDs or, or in a money market or T-bills, like I said, would be higher likely than what you'll be receiving with these I-bonds. So again, it's a bigger picture question, part of one you've got to consider when looking at all six areas of your financial life. So work with your certified financial planner on that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, you can contact one on my team, find us online, cohorn.com, that's Cohorn with K, wisemoneyshow.com, you can find us there as well, or send us an email, info at cohorn.com. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.